Hello everybody, it's 27th of April. Uh, I was going to do a garden update, but as you can see, the uh, good old British weather's returned. Blowing a gale, it's raining, so there'll be no gardening today, just a bit of seed sowing. I'm desperate to get to the plot to plant these peas out anyway. They're absolutely, they're starting to get tangled up now. Um, I'll bring them out, so bringing the camera up here. Give you a closer look. So that's the peas. Got three of them, desperate to go out now. So uh, hopefully over these next few days, if this wind goes away. So there will definitely be nowhere, no outdoor work today anyway. I'll bring the camera up in here, but I can hardly swing a cat about in here. It's getting a bit, uh, a bit cluttered up. I've got stuff to go down. I've got lettuce that I'm desperate to plant. Tomato plants are in here. They're going to be potted up. I was going to just save them and put them in the three litre pots, but I'm going to pot them on for a few more weeks, thinking into some one litre pots. Swift potatoes are up. So anyway, when I, when I go down to the plot, uh, I'll try and get back and do a garden update, so you can see, because I've got some spring greens that are planted in the garden, and also some that are still left from last winter. Right, so uh, get a bit of compost. Shut the old polytunnel. Get inside, make a brew, and let's sell some seeds. Right, by uh, magic of doing uh, camera work, I've already got the, uh, all my pots all pre filled. Labels made up ready. I thought it was pointless to be showing you how to fill pots of compost because I've done it many times. All I can say is don't pack it down too hard and don't have it too light and fluffy because you need to make sure you've got enough compost in there to hold the plant for probably mm, four to six weeks maybe. So um, if you do it too loosely when you come to take your plants out, it just fall to pieces too tight and you might, you know, it can't drain well so it'll waterlog and rot off, which does happen either way sometimes. So, uh, it's something you can't really teach, it's just it's just a judgment thing. So uh, I've got my root trainers, which are these, which are not a favourite thing of mine, root trainers, to be honest. I can't open them out because the compost will fill out. Um, but um, once you've grown your, your plant in them, you just basically slide one section of it out, they come out of sections, open it out, and you can open it and your plant will be there with the roots on, plant it straight in. So they're handy for stuff like, I'll use them for me, um, Cobra climbing beans. And then all the rest of them are seven centimetre, seven centimetre pots bought from Wilco's a good few years ago. And I've got these module trays which are like 15 cell. I just find them easy for keeping them slotted in rather than I used to plant direct in the module trays and then they start rotting and you carry them fall to pieces. So it's just easier and like this and you come to pot them on if you're going to pot them on. You can just make it like a dummy hole and put it in, which I'll show when I do my tomatoes and everything, which will be in the next few days. I will water them a little bit, it is slightly damp the compost, but um, when I saw everything, I'll be putting the tray into a tray of water and just leaving it to soak. So I can just see the top of the compost starting to go damp. That means it should have soaked up everything it needs and they'll go back into these trays and they'll just drain any excess off. Um, they're going to stay in for a few days um, just to because uh, the weather's not so great outside. I don't want them getting cold and rotting, so oh, you put them on windowsill. Um, they don't really need too much light these first few days, to be honest. So it's just it's just the heat to, to trigger them, really. Otherwise, they get cold and they're sat in all that wet compost. They might just rot because this time of year, the, the frost tender stuff, uh, so that's your sweet corn. You, courgettes, your cucumbers, if you're doing melons and squashes and pumpkins, they're all a bit susceptible to, to a bit of, they don't like a bit of frost, let's put it that way, so um, just pay attention to your um, your zone, you know, of your, of your climate area, depending on when your final frost is going to be, now mine's in about two, three weeks time, so I'm doing these a little later than I normally do, um, but They'll catch up because the weather's just horrible at the moment. We had a lot of good sunshine the other week, and then I knew this would come. Be back to this, so I planted my big onions are planted out and they're getting hammered about. So I'll just have to, 
I've done my bit, Mother Nature's just given them our time. So, right, we'll crack up with all these seeds. It's going to be a bit of a long video. I'm not going to really cut it and do it in stints. I'm just going to do it in real time. And, uh, and hopefully I've got everything I need. So uh, I'll move the camera so you can see what's going on in the tray. And we'll get, this, get cracking. Now this here is important. You need a brew when you're doing this. Uh, my dad made me this, but I'm going to have to make another one because it's a bit pale. So a bit of a tea shortage going on, I think. So that's first job. First of all, I'll put the tray there and just make sure you can see what's going on. Yeah, you can sort of get a, get a rough gist. Try and bring it a bit closer if I can, so uh, bear with the wobbly footage. A bit too close here. Try and angle you down a bit. So I think you'll get a rough idea. You know, so first of all, a bit of climbing bean. Which are uh, open the packet upside down like I usually do, but uh, they're actually old seed days, about two years of had days. So these are cobra, climbing bean, which uh, look like that. Now uh, with beans, I don't think you have to, but on them they sort of like have like a little. Uh, little part where they were attached inside their pod originally. Now I usually tend to always do that down. So I'm just going to basically lay each one on the top for now. So doing 28 of these. And because they're old seed, none of them might germinate, but you're okay with beans. You can you can plant them quite quite a bit later on. Beans and sweet corn don't tend to like going outside before the first week of June. If you have a good May, then you can put them out a little bit earlier if you want. But uh, if it's anything like this at the moment, no chance. Uh, I've been down to the plot since I planted everything out, just have a check. I just check stuff up, needed water in a bit more because the old moles have been having a dig around and lifting stuff up, so just worried about the uh, air pockets underneath. Don't want any of the roots drying out, but obviously when it's like this, there's no chance I'm going up. Traipsing around the field. Um, like I say, I've done my bit. I've got them as far as uh, getting them out in the ground. I've not babied them, treated them fairly mean. So it's up to them now. As long as the nets haven't blown off and the cattle stayed out of the field, they should be okay. Right, 28 of them. And I'm just going to get me the uh, finger. Any finger will do. If you haven't got any fingers, use a thumb or a pencil, whatever. Whatever means you need, just push them down till they're about half inch below the surface. Because you think, you know, beans are quite a big seed. You think you can plant them deeper, but they can be a bit of a bugger for rotting off, so... Shallower is slightly better than deeper, providing they don't dry out too much. You know, and you don't need your compost soaking wet. You know, you see a lot of um, tall, leggy seeds sat in, looks like a, you know, a, a, an absolute matted mess of sloppy compost, and they just they just don't do well. You know, from from the word go, they have they have a problem. So it causes a certain amount of stress on the plant. You know, it sure has a knock on effect, whether it. You know, makes it decide to go to seed early. 
But um, main thing is getting through the germination process, give them minimal water that they need, because you're trying to encourage roots to go right the way down. Get plenty of roots. There's enough life in its seed. You know, I've known people use putting like blood fish and bone meal in the seed mix and they just don't need it. You know, and if you've got pretty good ground, you won't need to feed the ground either. But I tend to just out of sort of habit, I tend to add a little bit of blood fish and bone to the to my raised beds. You know, because I've only put leaves in this year, which doesn't have a great deal in them. It's more of a soil conditioner. But it helps with the uh, the whole fungi thing. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to spray them lightly just to make sure that compost is down. That's just to wet the top. And then I've got a, a tray of water. Just move it out of the way. And try not to slop it everywhere. I'm always going to bring this around the once for the camera, but the seed tray, you can use a bigger tray if you want, or just put them in the sink. So, root trainers are completely open at the bottom now. I'm going to sit them down in that, and they can have a good few minutes in there. And then when you lift them out, they'll drain off any excess they need to, and that's enough. And I probably won't even water them until they're, you know, yay high, or they, they look like they're really dry, so it feels really light again. As I say, the camp compost is slightly damp anyway, so... So it should be okay. I've got my label for that somewhere. Can't find it offhand, but that's easy enough to remember. It's the only one in root trainers. All right, next we shall do courgettes, cucumbers. Make sure, you can, make sure you're in shop. And they're all pretty much sown the same way. I don't even know if I've got enough seeds in my cucumbers. Probably got some more somewhere if I need. It says five, so how many have we got? I've got seven. Well, that's a bonus. These are Fem Spot F1. Um, you can have a look online why you know you grow F1s because if you grow things like that, oh, Telegraph improved everything, they're great, but um, you have male flowers and any pollination, you can get bitter cucumbers. So, F1s are a good, safe way to go. Now, these seeds are obviously a bit smaller than courgettes. Pretty similar sort of size to a melon seed, I suppose. Um, and you plant them on their side, on the, on the actual flat edge, you, you push them down. You won't be able to see this very well. And all that does is it helps the seed come up. If it's trying to come up, you know, if you picture it trying to come up flat, it's a lot of compost, so you plant it on its, on its narrow edge down. And same again with these. I'm just pushing these actually down as I'm holding them. Probably 10 mil down. That will uh, that'll be quite enough. Three of them. It's compost. It hasn't got a lot of vermiculite in it. It's got some in it. I'd like to have had more in it, so I just need to be uh, a bit careful watching out for the old neck rot, which can happen if they get too wet around the necks when they come up. They'll rot off. Like I say, cucumbers are still time to grow cucumbers. If you're after a good outdoor one or a good, you know, kind of idiot proof one, he's market more. That's uh, a good all rounder. Give me labels. All right, so, Fem Spot is that one. And now I've got some courgette, which are uh, Easy Pick Gold F1. I've done the Easy Pick Green before, um, tend to not get too big, I didn't do them last year, I didn't do them before, so I thought I'll go a bit, bit all out and posh with courgettes, I'm not a fan, and my tortoise loves them. The courgettes will then plant, especially if you've got things like Defender and stuff, um, if you want to grow a lot, you don't need many plants, because once they start harvesting, once they start chucking them out, oh god, they don't stop. So 
So I'm just going to do five of these. You know, and they don't usually take that long, these sort of seeds, to come up. You know, five, seven days. They come up really quick. It might be because they're a bit warm. But if they start coming up fairly quick, you need to get them in some natural light. Because the last thing you want is uh, leggy members of the squash family. These are all done exactly the same way. A bit bigger to show on these, I suppose. So, but it's thin edge, so it's not that way down, it's that way down, and it's thin edge. Straight down, not planting it, it's kind of like on its, its horizontal, it's not like going in that way, it's going in, you know, down that way on its side, sort of thing. It's going to where, uh, as it comes up, it kind of kind of twists itself up like that when it comes out. You know, sometimes they struggle taking the you know getting rid of the seed shell. Don't be tempted to pull it off too early because it can cause problems to the uh, little tender leaves underneath. But I have done it the odd time when it's been really struggling. You know, and it won't always be perfect. Because don't forget, you know, there's obviously there'll be some genetics that are carried on, so you will get the odd random plant that just doesn't seem to do that great, and it might not necessarily be anything you've done wrong. So don't give up. If you're just starting out, don't give up. And even if you've been doing it for years, don't give up. Because you can't be right all the time. Right, so they're going to get dunked the same way as the, uh, the beans in a minute. So, next up. Sweet corn. Just need to uh, got these soaking for about 20 minutes in some water because they look proper dried and shriveled. What I'm going to use for these, I have to have a sharpie pen on handy, you know, on hand, which is a uh, it's just the ideal size for things like beans, sweet corn, peas, and things like that. So straight in the middle. I'm going down to about, you know, that part there. You know, so the actual top of the seed is going to probably end up about 10 mil below. I've known people just plant them on the top, on the side, and left them like that. A little, uh, the little grass spike comes out of them, because they are related to the grass family. I'm doing way more than I need, because I think I was only on about doing 16, but I might do them elsewhere. So I have no plan this year on the allotment. It's all... Uh, when stuff's ready, it's got to go in, and once it's in, I ain't moving it around. Because this is so like the last bit of stuff that you need to sow. Because believe it or not, next month you need to start thinking about what you're going to grow in the winter. We've only just seen the back of it, well, apparently. But just get your seed, try and get it in the hole. Drop them in like so. I can use a pen again, excuse me, finger just to make sure they, uh, they're all down in there. Sometimes sweet corn can be tricky for germinating, it can rot off quite easy. Um, I have had it before where um, it must have been bad seed because. You know, I did them a second time from a, another packet and I've had near enough 100% germination rate. And on the other one, you might get a few stragglers. But usually, I'd always allocate about five, five or ten more at least than what I need. Just make sure they're uh, got reasonable contact with the compost. It's quite soft and fluffy this compost. So shouldn't dry out too much. I'm gonna give the top of these a bit of a spray actually. Not much, just to uh, 
dumping them down the tub. And they're going to get soaked as well, because that spider goes away. So that's sweet corn, I hope better get labelling. So I've got another tray of them to do, which I'll do exactly the same. And they're going to get dumped as well. So here's one you don't see me soft very often. Flowers, I'm not really a flower man, but these are nasturtiums. And um, I know people grow them for a companion plant, but I grow them because my tortoise likes eating them. So uh, they're not something I usually put heart and soul into. They just they grow a few and they just get bunged willy nilly. It doesn't take him long to polish them off. So you can soak these if you're on, but I don't bother. Straight in the middle, put them on top. The variety of these is Whirly Bird. Oh, the variety of my sweet corn was Swift. That's an F1 as well. An F1 basically means it's the first sort of generation and it's sort of a cross. It's a cross, but it's a hybrid. You know, so um, you wouldn't expect to uh, save seed from them and get a direct duplicate. You, you're more likely to get one of the parents. So I'm just doing 15 of these, because it's enough. I'm just going to push them half inch down, be enough. And these will just get dotted about here and there, wherever. In the garden, maybe in pots, in border or something like that. But I just when, I'm, uh, when I've got sorts outside running around, I can uh, pull a few flowers off. Um, but cabbage whites, yep, the same ones that love your brassicas. They also love nasturtiums as well. well. There's many other bugs. They attract both beneficial and pests, so they're good to attract pests across to these. I tend to not like them too near brassicas. When the uh, caterpillars tend to finish these, they can quite easily drop off, crawl, crawl across the ground, and start chomping down on your crop. I'll give them a little, little spray. And they're all going to get soaked. That's all them seeds done. Um, just going to do a few more lettuce seeds in the next day or two. I'm not going to do anything today, I'll say, because I can't go outside really in this and do anything. Right, that's it for this video. You know, I've, I've done my the, uh, the sweet corn, the beans, and nasturtiums, and the climbing French beans. Um, you know, I was hoping to do a bit more in this video, but the weather's stopping me. So the next video, I'll be going down the plot. So I'll probably have a quick look around there. There might be some lettuce to plant out there. Um, then there'll be a look around the garden. There's definitely my peas to plant at the allotment, well, to, to slide out the gutters. They're desperate then. And then there'll be a look around the garden. Uh, probably plant some lettuce in the garden. Soil some carrots direct. I'm not sure of the variety. Uh, I, I've got some gutter I pierce holes through, but I'm just doing it the old traditional way. I'm just going to make a little little drill and then sow them very thinly. Try to anyway, and uh, try. I need to try and sort some sort of insect mesh out. I've got so much need to find the time to actually build something and cover them. You know, fleece would do for carrots, to be honest. Um, so there's there's loads of little jobs to do. You know, it's, like I say, the, it's it's on the weather now. So don't be too. Uh, you know, excited to get things out you know there's still there's still time you know so don't think you're uh, you're out of time you know so you can you can go and buy some plants if you have to i mean i've got i wasn't going to do any peppers i didn't sow any so i was in being cute the night getting another cheap bag of compost to finish off topping potatoes up and they had some pepper plants there they look rubbish but i thought you know what they're a quid each some like that. i thought i'll take two of them and i'll put them in bigger pots if they come round fine you know there's no shame in buying plants you don't have to do you know because some people seem to struggle with the sowing side personally it's my favorite part of gardening i like sowing the seeds and the pricking out i'll ask my, probably one of my favorite bits i like the harvesting don't mind that at all but the uh, the maintaining and the weeding and all the labor intensive stuff i can't stand if i had someone else to do that um, then great luckily you know i've got a missus who's willing to help so that's that's always um much appreciated so, Jill, if you're watching, thanks for helping down the allotment. Uh, I know you got cold, you went and sat in the van, but that's the way it goes. So that's it for this video. So take care, and I'll see you next time. See you now. Bye.